Now step number five and six are specific to a feeder. Now the branch circuit steps one through four. Let's say we had a couple of those branch circuits on one feeder. Okay, we've got a couple of motors on one feeder. Then we're talking about the feeder attributes, like step number five says, all right, if you got a feeder, the conductor size for a feeder where you got multiple motors, multiple branches, says feeder conductors size 430.24. Well, let's not even go there because we, we can do it right here just with what we've got glued in. It says multiply the largest rated motor in full low currents by 125 amp, or 125%. So whatever our largest motor in full low current is, multiply it by 125%. Then add the full low current of all other motors. Connect to the same feeder conductor for the required ampacity. Then go to table 310.16 to find the actual size wire. So let's say we have two of those motors we've been using as a reference point, those 10 horsepower motors rated at 50 amps at 230 volts, right? So we got two of those on one feeder. What we'd say was take the largest one, where well, they're both equal, so take one of them, multiply it by 125%. Well, we've done that, right? We came up 50 amps times 125% and came up 62.5. Then it says add all other motors. Well, if I told you we only had two, then we're going to add the other one. So 62.5 plus 50, now we got 112.5, right? So for the feeder conductor size, we need a conductor size good enough for 112.5 amps. Let's turn to page 161. What size wire would that be? 112.5? Number two. Number two, good for 115 amps. So number two gauge wire would be a good feeder wire size for these two 10 horsepower single phase motors that are rated at 50 amps a piece, right? By the way, before we go to step number six, let's go back to step number five, and let's go ahead and highlight full low current by 125%, and then highlight add the FLC of all other. And then of course, go up the very first line, highlight largest. 